Hi, Uncle Lassum here again, and finally I can present you with my Amiga 2000 that is finally complete. And first I had to get the computer, then the keyboard, the mouser, the mouse, and it took a while before I could get the complete setup. This one is from 1988, and I'm going to try to keep it as a 1988 machine, at least the computer itself. Once I got this machine, the second floppy drive was not detected. So there was a problem on the motherboard, I tried to repair it, and then I made everything worse. I got a black screen, white screen, green screen, and I tried to check the continuity on traces, and I replaced all the chips, I reseated the chips, nothing would work, but it was actually just one bent pin under the Denise chip, even though I had already checked it and reseated it. I, yeah, I don't understand how I missed that, but anyway, not important. It's working now, and I'm so happy about that, because I'm going to also install a hard disk controller and a hard disk from 1988, I believe, on this computer. And uh, yeah, it's going to be so nice to have a big box Amiga, and I hope that I can expand it even further uh, with the 68220 processor, processor someday, and also um, uh, this bridge card, or, or bridge board so that I can get this PC emulation or Mac emulation. I'll go with PC emulation. And um, yeah, and even if you are a PC user and not that interested in Amiga, you should still be interested in this machine because it's very interesting, as we shall now see when I open up this computer. Imagine as a kid you're playing on your Amiga 500, and then perhaps on a magazine like this you discover the new Amiga 2000, the next generation Amiga. That must have felt like a dream machine to own. It's so nice to have this old magazine here, March, April 1987. It's like a little time machine. Take an Amiga 1000, at about 750k for a total of 1 megabyte of internal RAM, add a bunch of internal slots for memory, expansion, Amiga and IBM PC cards, maybe another CPU, put in room for 2 or more disk drives, hard or floppy, put contents into a metal box and fasten securely, add an enlarged keyboard, fasten seatbelt, because it goes so fast. And I have another one here. The new expandable Amiga 2000. A hands-on look at Commodore's newest and most powerful machine ever. And yes, it is right here. And now I'm going to install the hard drive. So here is the hard drive. Quite thick. Model and XY. I think it is 40 megabyte. And here is this controller card. What a lovely big card. Have the manual here. GVP, Impact A2000 SCSI controllers. Here is the original disk and the backup. So, yeah, let's install it. Or perhaps I should read the manual first. I'm not familiar with this old tech. Installation and user guide. If the two GBP auto boot EPROMs are installed on the Impact A2000 and your A2000 still has the version 1.2 kickstart RAM, then use the auto boot jumper J2. See the diagram at the beginning of this chapter. Must be removed as no auto boot booting is possible with the 1.2 kickstart RAM. Um, 
But I have. What do I have? Do I have 1.2? Oops. Let's see if I can find Kickstart 1.3. I am pretty sure this is Kickstart 1.3. Okay. So it's basically just plugging in, plugging in the card. And see if I can fit this one in the five and a quarter inch bay. So now I need to remove this thing to be able to install the hard disk itself and also the new kickstart RAM. I'm actually missing some screws. So I need to figure out what are the types of screws that I need. Also see here. There is also still some chips here that seemed like there could be some corrosion thing going on. I'm not sure. It looks. I'll zoom in. Like on this chip here. It doesn't look like a regular clear solder joints, right? It looks. Very dark. So maybe I need to clean it up. I'm not sure. What do you think? So the reason I think, even as a PC user, if that's your thing, you should still find this interesting is because look at how big this motherboard is. It's quite large and also it uses a lot of these big expansion cards and of course we all love big expansion cards. And here is one type of expansion slot. Here is another type. Here are some other types here also. And here, longer ones here. And these two short ones. So what are all of these things? First of all, this is like an internal internal video port, so you could install something like a scan doubler to be able to use uh, this on a regular CRT monitor. And I'm not sure if you can get other types of hardware here also. I'm sure you can. And this is for the CPU uh, or accelerator cards. So if you install a 68010, then you can just remove this CPU and put in a 68010. But to get uh, something like a 68020 or more or faster, then you install these accelerator cards here with CPU and RAM installed on the board that you install here. And here you have the Amiga Zorro slots, Zorro 2 slots. And here you have actually a 16-bit um, ISA slot. So here you can install these um, bridge board cards. So you can have, a, can have a PC emulator here or here or a Macintosh emulator. And you can also add in cards like your 16-bit card here, 16-bit uh, ISA card or 8-bit ISA cards here. So you can install perhaps like a PC emulator card and an adlib card. Should work fine. So I think this is um, very different from a PC. Like my typical 386, 486 computers that I'm more used to. And now I'm going to install this ROM here. Okay. There we go. And then I guess I can just 
install this one here, for example. By the way, these two chips here is what I replaced to get uh, the second floppy drive working again. This is uh, U900 and this is U108. So there is no way of really mounting this here. I should make an adapter, but I think I can at least um, screw it in with one screw. I can attach it with a screw here. And that should be okay for now at least. So my brother did tell me that I need to clean these uh, pins up here. Before it gets worse. But for now I'm going to just set it up because I've been waiting for so long to get this system ready. Uh. Let's see here. I have to double check how the cable is supposed to be connected, where pin 1 is. And uh, I can see here that uh, pin 1 on the Impact A2000 SCSI RAM controller is located on the lower side of the 50 pin internal SCSI connector on the side. Uh, which is closest to the Amiga 2000 motherboard. So, pin 1 should be the red cable here, closest to the motherboard. And here, it says 50 there, and well, two there. So I am assuming that the red cable should be closest to the power supply, which is normal. Okay, let's see what happens. Um, please insert volume DF2. In order to use your hard disk with Amiga, you need to format and initialize the hard disk into one or more Amiga DOS file system volumes. To do this, you need to use the GVP installation diskette that is included with your impact peripheral. Peripher, per, peripheral? How do you say that word? I don't know. <laughs> Let's try this disk first. Let's uh, install SCSI. Do you wish to accept the GVP default automatic partitioning of 219? Uh, do I need two partitions? I think I'll have just one. Okay, no. One partition. 39.9. And here. Now remove the floppy disk at the NTF0 and reboot your system. Sounds simple. Hmm. And that's it. Okay, this is much better. Now I can install 
what I want in here. I make sure that everything works as I expect it to. Nice! Miniature gold. Okay, so I have installed a few things, like Vista Pro, which I don't know how to use. Hippo Player. And um, the looks paint. So yeah. And this game here did work. I just had to restart. And it is a little bit fun for a little while. Oops. This is one of the best games for the Amiga, in my opinion. A game I can still have fun with today. The floppy disks are quite uh, silent compared to my other Amigas. Oops. So it's going to be a lot of fun trying to add more stuff to this computer, like a PC emulator or bridge board, and connecting the serial port and parallel port, and perhaps get a network card, if that's possible, and just connecting and installing a lot of cool stuff. Well, thank you so much for watching, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you next time.